What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. In this episode, we're going to talk more about iOS 17.5 and the new features that have been added. We're gonna talk about even more new iOS 18 leaks, why the App Store is never gonna be the same, a crazy AirTag story, and much more. And as always, if you wanna stay in the loop of everything going on in the world of Apple, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and check out the Apple Den newsletter. Okay, so let's start with the biggest news of the week, perhaps the biggest news of the year. And this kind of plays off of what we talked about last week. So last week we talked about how game emulator applications are now available in the App Store. They're now permitted in the App Store by Apple. And the big news this week is that Delta, the all-in-one retro game emulator, is now available for free in the App Store. And I made a full tutorial video on this, so if you missed it, I will leave it linked down in the description below. But you can see here, I have Game Boy Color games, Game Boy Advance, we have Nintendo DS, SNES, N64, you can do regular NES games on here as well. So I've been playing all my Pokemon games pretty much all night, that's what I was doing here on the iPhone, and it is amazing. But this is not the only emulator that's coming to the iPhone, because we also just got word that Provenance, another multi-emulator application, is also also set to come to the App Store soon. And this is going to differ from Delta because this is going to allow you to play games from PS1, GameCube, Wii, Sega Genesis, and Atari 2600. Now, in my opinion, Delta is the superior application just because of the UI. It's just so much better UI-wise, but it's gonna be nice to see even more emulator applications come to the App Store. And one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that the Delta application has been around for a while now. I actually made a video on Delta when it it was still in beta back in 2016. So the thing is that Apple just kept rejecting it from the App Store dozens and dozens of times over the years because emulator apps were just frowned upon. They were not allowed in the App Store until just last week. So it's no surprise that within hours, Delta hit number one in the App Store overall. And then in addition to Delta, the developer Riley also launched one of the first third-party app stores in the EU called Alt Store Pal. So this contains two applications right now, Delta and Clip which is a clipboard manager. And this is designed to be a decentralized, you know, app marketplace with no directory. So the only apps you're gonna see are gonna be ones from these sources that you add yourself. And a lot of people are upset that Alt Store is not free. It costs 1.5 euros. So it's not free, but that is mainly to combat Apple's core technology fee, which is going to cost them 50 cents or 0.50 euros for every download. So that's gonna add up. And of course there are other costs that go involved, you know, that are involved with, you know, running this marketplace. So I think that price is more than justified. All right, so let's move on to iOS 18, because once again, we have even more new rumors from reputable sources about iOS 18 and also the new Mac OS 15. So first off, you can see here from Bloomberg, they say that the initial AI features in iOS 18 will be entirely on device. So there's not gonna be any need for cloud servers to access information online. Now, Apple is still going to offer cloud-based generative AI features, just not with their own LLM models. That's where we heard that Apple might be partnering with Google, OpenAI, or even Baidu, you know, to support those cloud-based models. And then we also heard about a more specific change coming to iOS 18 from Apple Insider, who said that one of the new features is rumored to be audio recording in the Apple Notes application. So this is gonna let you record, save, and play audio recordings directly from the Notes application. And then also another rumored feature for the Notes app is called Math Notes, which will integrate Notes with the calculator application. And then they also mentioned that Mac OS 15 is going to have some big changes to the calculator application. And they say specifically that in addition to the Math Notes feature, the updated calculator app will receive a new history tape in the form of a sidebar that displays an overview of earlier calculations. So it looks like it's gonna be kind of like a clipboard history feature integrated into the calculator so you can see your previous calculations. And then they also mentioned that the calculator app is gonna get a whole new design in Mac OS 15 as well with rounded buttons and darker shades of black across the application. So do you remember a couple months ago when we talked about the new AirPlay to hotel TV feature? Well, yeah, that just started rolling out this week. 
So this was introduced, I believe in 17.2. And now Apple has started rolling this out. So they said, starting today, guests staying at select properties from IHG hotels and resorts can use AirPlay to privately and securely stream their favorite shows and movies on Apple TV Plus and other popular streaming services, along with being able to access Apple Music, Photos, Apple Arcade, Apple Fitness Plus, and more. And they say that more than 60 IHG properties in North America are introducing AirPlay today with others to be added in the coming months. The Apple Sports application, which has quickly become one of my favorite, you know, first party applications. It's so lightweight and so much better than Bleacher Report and ESPN, in my opinion. So this just got an update this week, version 1.2, and it says it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Follow every matchup with added details on each series and more. And it also contains stability and performance enhancements. So it looks like during the playoffs, you're going to be able to see more information than you can normally. And if you use WhatsApp, they just started rolling out a new chat filters feature that helps you find conversations faster. So you have three different filters. You have all unread and groups. And WhatsApp says that the chat filters feature is rolling out now and will be available to everyone on both iOS and Android in the coming weeks. But you might not even be able to download WhatsApp if you live in a certain country. And that's because Apple has removed WhatsApp, Threads, Signal, and Telegram from the China App Store on government orders. And Apple told 9to5Mac that the Cyberspace Administration of China cites national security concerns for their request. All right, so now let's move on to iOS 17.5 and let's talk about some additional changes here. So first off, we did just receive beta two this past week and iOS 17.5 beta two finally added support for sideloading from third-party app stores online. So you'd be able to download applications from Safari. So that was made official and we actually have screenshots now of what that looks like in action. So shout out to a user for sending over screenshots that lives in the EU of downloading alt store. So here's what the whole process looks like. So you go to altstore.io and this allows you to download the app store straight from Safari. So you do have to click okay on app installation. And from there you do get a prompt in settings that says allow apps from that developer. And then after you do that, you have to allow once again, it shows you everything, you know, that the app store, uh, the alt store LLC can do. So this developer can do, it shows, you know, app installation, your data, and also on available features. So make sure that you know everything that's going on so you don't accidentally install, you know, a third party app store. So Apple is being very secure with this process. And then after that, you do have the app installation settings. So this actually shows up in settings right underneath of app store. There's a new app installation section right there. And you can see this is all in that section and you can remove the developer from that section as well. And then after that, you get the prompt to install the app marketplace, which in this case is alt store pow. And then you can see this is what it looks like inside of the application. And this of course is where you can download Delta. If you are in the EU, you can see the install button down there. And then here's what it looks like when you go to install an application and it is also integrated with Patreon. So if you are an independent developer and you upload an application to alt store, you can get, you know, donations and custom and pledges from users. And then also Clip is another application in Alt Store that is basically a clipboard manager. And that's what it looks like when you install it. So all of that is new in iOS 17.5 beta two. And then some of the other changes are that Apple Pay is now available in Ecuador. And then something else that was changed in iOS 17.5 beta two, which caused quite a bit of controversy again, and I posted this over on X, is that they fixed a bug quote unquote bug that showed the Palestinian flag emoji when typing out Jerusalem. And those are the only additional changes in 17.5 beta two. I don't want to keep covering changes that were in 17.5 beta one, just because I don't like to repeat myself time and time again with these videos. But anyways, let's talk about the performance. So performance has actually been great on 17.5 beta two. As you guys remember in my what's new video, the Geekbench scores were pretty true, actually. Uh, and usually you kind of take these with a grain of salt. They could, you know, show something they could not, but the single core and the multi-core were higher. So I said that we might actually see a performance boost. You can't always take, you know, the, the scores and just assume it's gonna be faster in real life, but it actually has been. I've noticed a improvement in performance with 17.5 beta two. And then when it comes to battery life, that is where I experienced the biggest upgrade in 17.5 beta two overall. Battery life is much better 
better here on beta 2 than it was on beta 1. And I alluded to this in my what's new video as well because I noticed that the battery life didn't go down the entire video. That's usually my first indication. And you can see here on my main device, battery life great on 17.5 beta 2. I hope it stays that way for the final release. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is going to be iOS 17.5 beta 3. And I do think we're going to see that next week on the week of April 22nd. Now we should see that on Tuesday the 23rd. That's typically when Apple releases these beta software updates, but of course it could come anytime next week. Now I would not expect that to be the final beta. I think we will probably see at least one more beta of 17.5 until the RC and of course the final release. Now for those wondering if we're going to see a 17.4.2, as I mentioned for the past two weeks, I don't think that's happening. I think 17.5 is going to be the next public release. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we might be seeing the new iPad announcements as early as next week. So I think, you know, we're hearing that they're coming in early May. So we could actually see the announcement next week or the following week. So just keep a lookout for that. And that right there leads me into the first topic I want to talk about with some other Apple related news from this week. So let's talk about those new iPads because again, we're expected to see that announcement within the next two weeks. And we're also now hearing that the 12.9 inch iPad Air is rumored to feature a mini LED display according to Ross Young. And this would be a big upgrade for the iPad Air because the current iPad Air model has an LCD display. So to go from LCD to mini LED is going to be a big jump in overall you know quality of that screen and i would also expect the price to increase as a result now we're not hearing about the smaller 11 inch model getting mini led so this looks like it's going to stick with lcd and it looks like this is going to be a main way that apple differentiates the ipad pro and the ipad air because the ipad pro is now expected to switch to oled so we're going to have two different types of displays on those two models and then something else that young said this week is that the iphone 17 plus is going to have have a smaller screen than the current generation iPhone 15 plus, which of course has that 6.7 inch display. Now, I didn't say the exact screen size, but I found that to be pretty interesting. And as you guys know, Ross Young is typically pretty accurate when it comes to leaks like this. And then also let's talk about the iPhone 16 Pro because it looks like the camera might actually get a worthy upgrade this year because we might have less lens flare and ghosting. So this news comes from a rumor out of Korea that says Apple is testing a new anti-reflective optical coating technology for the next pro phone camera. This is going to improve the quality of photos by reducing artifacts like lens flares and ghosting. And this new manufacturing technique that they might use is called atomic layer deposition or ALD. So that is a very, you know, unsexy change to the iPhone 16 Pro camera. That's not going to seem like a big deal to a lot of people, but it's one of those minor things that's going to make a big difference in the camera's output. So I really hope this is true. And then finally, just as tradition, let's talk about another crazy AirTag story. And this one, it comes from a mom in Florida who was panicking when she got alerts on her iPhone in the Find My application that an unknown AirTag had been tracking her seven-year-old son. She searched through all of his clothing and toys and said that her heart dropped when she found the device in a quarter-sized hole bored into her son's shoe. She said it had been tracking him for nearly a month. She called it every mother's worst nightmare, and that of course led her straight to the police, where deputy subpoenaed Apple to get the address of the person who owned the AirTag. And who was the person that owned the AirTag? Well, this might surprise you because it was somebody from out of state. And that somebody was another mother of a young boy from Oklahoma who just so happened to have the exact same shoes and seemingly the exact same size as another boy who was at a Christmas parade bounce house. So these two boys got on this little bounce house and then when they came to put their shoes on, I guess they just swapped them because they looked exactly the same and they had the same size. That is ironic. So that is a crazy story and a crazy coincidence, just crazy all around. So yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of tracking your kids with a hidden air tag in the shoe. Although I will say that is a great spot to hide an air tag. I've never seen that before, but yeah, this is just a pretty interesting story that I thought you guys might like. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest in the world of Apple. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future Apple news updates. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.